set time to be holy. Speak of with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him, whatever be time. In joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt soon be fitted for service aboard. In Jesus' name we pray. A divine Father, you are our Creator. We did not come to life by our own, you brought us to life. We are not in life to do what we want by what you want. And we have discovered that we have to find out from you what we want so you can let us know for you have put things in the realm of prayer i'm requesting lord that my brethren that are here that have been walking contrary without knowing what you want them to do you will bring them back to the right path as they seek your face and ask you for your will you will put them in the right path of success and achievement in the right part of victory, in the right part of eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. Divine Father, we are also praying for those who have a particular thing they want to do and they want to know your mind for it. Those who have a decision to take and they want to know your mind for it. Divine, I'm asking as they listen to this word and apply it and comply seeking your will for the definite desire answer them in jesus name Amen. it could be your will in marriage your will in business your will in traveling your will in a project to be done your will in the christian ministry your will in every area your will in all things father god answer them in jesus name Amen. as a group of people come to you a church come to you and say lord what do you want us to do what's your will in this matter father as they seek your face answer them in jesus name as a family comes to you wanting to know your will concerning the family concerning an individual in the family even on matters hidden god reveal it out in jesus name thank you divine for answering speak your word and let your word be a light unto us in jesus name we pray amen, amen. seeking god for his will seeking god for his will you need to know the will of god you need to know the will of god for your life what god wants you to do the direction he wants you to take 
very important. This is the secret of a peaceful life. The secret of a successful life. The secret of a victorious life. The secret of a life that ends in heaven. The will of God. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew. Chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. I read verse 9. After this manner. Therefore pray ye our father. Which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Can we read the rest, the other one? Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Look at the scripture. After glorifying God, after worshipping God, and asking him to take over, your life. Ask him for your will. his will in your life. Your will be done in on earth as it is in heaven. Very important. Has God has his kingdom come to you? Are you now a child of God? born again his kingdom has come to you on earth then the next thing is his will to be done in your life while you are on earth as he desires it in heaven as it is done by the angels in heaven in the book of acts of apostles chapter 9 acts of apostles chapter 9 I read from verse 1. From verse 1. And so, yet breathing out threatening and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high place, the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues. That if he found any of this way, whether they were men of or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and had a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is a hard thing for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Can we say along with him, Lord, what will thou have me to do? Has his kingdom come upon you? Has your life changed? Have you recognized? The authority of God. Have you submitted to it? Now you know he is your Lord. The next thing is, how do I live? How, what do I do? Where do I go? Where do I stay? What do I say? Show me your will. That is how it is. There are people that live on earth without God. They are without God. They are like sheep that have gone astray. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've gone every man to his own way. God was left behind. A sheep that has gone out of the, the uh, astray from the owner is not under commandment when to come and sleep when to go and drink water what to eat and what not to eat where to go and where not to go the sheep is not under commandment and that is how the world is they are not under divine commandment that is how the sinners are 
they are not under divine commandment. They do what they want to do, left to their own way. That's why they bring shame to God. A child left to his own way shall be a shame unto his parents. Left to their own way. They stumble at many things. God is not involved. That's why you stumble at many things. You marry and cry. You go to read courses in school and have no job and cry and blame. You take this decision, you engage into this business, you come, you complain, you get ruined, you get destroyed, everything scattered. You just go to any land, stay there and come back empty, a prodigal son. You acquire much money, you don't know what to do, the money, it's, the money itself go to imprison you. Why? There's nobody commanding you. Nobody is instructing you. Nobody is guiding you. But no, you who are in Christ have known Jesus, believe in Jesus, servant of the Most High. God is our all sufficiency. He is our all in all. All we need is with Him. He is our way, our truth and our life come to him for all you need in life including his will for you in any area he says he is a counselor unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful his ways are wonderful then what counselor the advisor the advisor that's god he is an advisor the advisor the counselor not the advisor the one whose world will make things clear unto you, will bring light to your path, will clear off darkness from your way. He's God. Come to him. Young men growing up, you don't want to be wasted in life, come to God to guide you. I will instruct thee on the way that thou should follow. I will instruct thee and lead thee in the way that you should follow and I will guide you with my eye. That's God. Turn to him. Parents, turn to him. So you will receive guidance for your little ones. Yes, you who are managers in your offices. Turn to him. He will give you guidance. You are working. How was Joseph in success? It was God that made Joseph in success. He was turning to him to ask counsel how to do the job. How, he remembered how his father Jacob made it. How did Jacob make, make it in, under a hard man that wanted to cheat him in every way? It was by the counsel of God. Asking God, what do I do? How do I get my own? And God say, do like this. Do like this. He is the counselor. You want to succeed. How do you get married? Go to him. Go to him. The counselor. He will give you counsel. He will show you what to do. He will guide you on what to do. He will lead you to the persons that will be, blessings to, be of blessing to you. That's what he is saying. How do you overcome this problem? How do you conquer this problem? How do you win over Satan in that area? Go and ask God. Go and ask God. He will tell you how to do. You will just find that actually my, the yoke is easy and my burden is light. Because I teach you how to do it. This mountain that looks steep in your front, if you go to the back, it is a flat ground. You can climb it. Except somebody tells you you will not know. 
you'll be struggling with the what you're seeing. Stay wrong. And you want to claim it. Maybe if something is there, I want to claim it. Oh, I have been instructed to claim it. And all these years are wasting energy. Why don't you come for counsel? A word will come to you, move to the back. You will discover it's a playing ground. Just going up steadily to the top. It looks steep in the front. It is plain at the back. It's smooth at the back. You can just roll up into it. That's it now. Many things you have been wasting time for. You waste time on them because you have not come for counseling. You have not sought his face. Sought his face for, for world, for understanding. Of course, life is hard. Businesses are failing. Money is getting, getting disappeared. How do you make it in this situation? Go and ask God. He will tell you what to do. And you will discover resources. Elijah saw where there was a pool of water. He saw it. Where there was a pool of water, he instructed him. He said it. I will instruct thee and guide thee. I will instruct thee. Or else, he will tell you where to go and do where he can do a miracle for your life. Ask him. Everybody say, from today, I will seek his face seriously. Say it again. Say it the third time. You will be a peaceful man. You will be a peaceful woman. And you will have sufficiency. In Jesus name. God does not want you to live in darkness. But to walk in the light. To live in the light. That is his desire for you. In Psalm 119, verse 105. 119 of Psalm 105. Yes, the scripture says, Thy world is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy world shows me how guides my path, shows me where the way is because it's a light. It shows me where I should go. It shows me the path I should follow. That's your world. So that I'm not in darkness. Again, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 21. Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 21. The Bible says, And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left, your ear shall hear a word, saying unto you, this is the way. Walk ye in it. You know, somebody. Listen. Let me just say a little thing. Situations are getting tougher. Money is depreciating. Salaries are not being paid. The word of God concerning end time must be fulfilled. And some will now say, I have not gotten salary for three months, four months. There's nothing to eat. Yes, let's go to the church. Pastor, I've not gotten salary. You are aware. What can the church do about this? Are you hearing me? Uh, a story was told of a man that arrived from America in Adamawa State, Sunshine State, in the airport. And uh, when the sun was biting him on the head, 
He said, this is too much. What is the government of Nigeria doing about this? <laughs> government of Nigeria should alter nature. <laughs> Amen. So, you will be thinking that the church is the financial solution to everybody here. Since the government is failing. Are you getting it? I so let pastor give money for your sickness. Your child is sick. How your family will feed. And this one will... Fact, I want to travel. Pastor, can the church help me with money? Pastor. Ah. You are the one giving the baptized and offering to the church. And you don't have. You feel that we have. Is that? We trust we shall have. And God shall really bring it. But I would rather tell you the source of eternal sustenance. God. Go and ask him. How do I survive in this hard time? What do I do now that they don't pay salaries? What do I do now that the country is turning this way? The world is turning this way. How do I live? The God that sustains Elijah will sustain you. Sustain you. Go and ask him. Seek his will. Seek a word from the Lord. That will be the solution. Because even if we help you, it will finish. Then what do you do next? Are you the only one that is a member of the church? Are you the only one that is a leader in the church? No. Find solution from God. Seek him endlessly. He will reveal to you the truth you are looking for. Now, his will, number one, his will in his world. His will is in his world. The Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. It is as it comes that wisdom will develop in you. The more of the word you know, the more of understanding you will have. Be not unwise, but understanding what the will of God is. You un the more of this word in your life, the more of understanding you will have. The more of wisdom you will develop concerning the things of God. You will know how and what to do. Wisdom will come up. Understanding will, will make you know. Know. Understand. And wisdom will make you apply what you know and understand. You will know the mind of God. You will know the way out by scriptures. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Then the mind of God will come naturally from it. By the word of God is the mind of God. Very often, Jesus who said, what saith the scripture? What does the scripture say? Because that's the mind of God. That's the will of God in your matter. In, your, in the issue of your marriage. What does the Bible say? You are taking a decision with your wife. What saith the scripture? Or you want to marry. Oh God, I want to marry. But what saith the scripture? What does the Bible say concerning that area? That's the will of God. 
the, the Bible says the person you want to marry, make sure he's a Christian, a child of God, living in the righteousness of God. But you have gotten one that is not a child of God, or pretends she is, but is not, or says he is, but is not. Is that the will of God for you? No. You don't need to ask again. Because what says the scripture? What is the scripture saying? You want to go into a business with a, an unbeliever. You say, I, I want to know God's mind about it. What, are you, what says the scripture? What is the scripture saying? Be ye not unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. The way you ask him again. That's the will of God revealed. Why do you want to pray again? Pray of pray to who or what? But you go ahead. Oh, because you don't know the scriptures. These people perish knowing not the scripture. These people, the air, knowing not the scriptures. It's because you don't know the scriptures. That's why you take the decision you take. The people of the world don't know the scripture. That's why they take the decision they take without God. If it comes up well, fine. If it is wrong, let them suffer it. Why? They don't know the scriptures. But you know the scriptures. The will of God is in the scripture. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. The Bible is telling us there. The will of God. The scripture is the will of God. Verse 17. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and rested in the law, and makest thy boast of God. Rested in the law, the word. The word of God. Verse 18. And knowest his will through the law. You know his will through the law. It is through the world, the word of commandment, that you will know his will. And know what his will through, through, through the law, as I said. And approves the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. The instructions you are receiving from the word is the will of God. The instruction you are receiving through the word of God that is taught you, that you read and study, that is the will of God for you. When a particular lawyer told Jesus, recited the scriptures, I say about how, yeah, that Jesus was right. He said, Go and do that like go and do what you have said. Go and do exactly and you have the kingdom. That's the mind of God. That's the will of God. That makes you to study the scripture. The scripture is the will of God. In Psalm, I'm sorry, in Isaiah chapter 48. Isaiah chapter 48. The Bible tells us in verse 17. Verse 17 and to 19. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit. Which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. that thou hast hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Thy seed also had been as the sand and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. Can you see now? God is saying, I am the one teaching you the world. 
I am the one instructing you. The world. I am the one leading you. By my world. By the knowledge of my world. Oh. That you have hearkened to my commandment. That's the world. That word you read is the will of God. Your blessing is there. Your freedom is there. Yes, the goodness you're looking for is there. Oh, that you listen to that word. That you carry it out. You, will, you would have enjoyed peace. That you carry it out that word. You would have enjoyed real peace. Some of you have husbands that are bullying you. And the Lord tells you what to do. In his word. You are not hearing. You want to go and pray to tell you another special thing. Go and submit to that man. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands. As it is fit and proper in the Lord. Let's add that clause there for you. Submit. As you are submissive to Christ in all morals and righteousness. In matters that Christ will approve. So submit your husband. In matters that Christ will approve. Not in evil things that Christ will rebuke. Will discipline you. Judge you for. No. In matters that Christ will approve. Submit to your own husband. But you are not doing it. And you are passing through trouble. Will you help me pray? My husband. When last as a woman have you consented to your husband? Submitted to your husband? Release yourself to your husband. We lost. But the world tells you what to do. That's the will of God in that matter. Follow it. You will enjoy peace. You, the man will be laughing. You say, oh God, you have done it. Yes, in his world. For the word of God, the commandment of God, is the will of God. The commandment of God. Some are married wrongly. And the scripture revealed it clearly. No, they are saying not the will of God. God, she be, tell us. Tell me. I want to hear from yourself. What are you talking about? God has time for you. When the scripture is there. Very clear. You say you want a word. A voice. Be waiting for it. So, that's what we are saying. The word of God. Is... The will of God. The mind of God. Proper interpretation of the scriptures. Shows the will of God. In that area. Proper interpretation. True correct interpretation of the scriptures. Show the mind of God. The matter has ended. The issue has settled. For this is what the scripture says. What do the lawyers go to do in the court? Is it not, do they not go to court the constitution and the decrees that have been made to rule the nation, to administer the nation? They go to court and remind the judge about it and that settles the matter. Is that not so? That's it. One scripture says it, that settles it. Uh, a particular pastor told me he was taken to police station because a man's wife was coming to his church and the man had told the pastor don't allow my wife to come to your church he has warned the pastor so now since the pastor would not hear he took the pastor to the police station and the police now were to the pastor this man wants you that his, his wife should not come to your heart, to your church. Did he? Yes, he did. Why did he not comply? The word of God speaks contrary. Which part of the scripture is telling you that? Uh, uh, now the pastor quoted. He said, all that my father has given to me will come to me. And anyone that comes to me, I will not cast him away. But the police is also so is it a rebel? <laughs> <laughs> the matter ended. 
you know the police has, is, is a Christian policeman. He wanted to use the Bible to, to judge this pastor that was doing wickedness. But when he discovered that the authority of scripture justified the pastor, they closed close. Praise the Lord. The word of God is the law of God. It's the will of God. That's why you need to read it. You need to study it. You need to listen to it. Those who know the truth. That's why you need to turn away from those who don't know it. Turn away from the presence of a foolish man. When thou perceivest not in him the lips of wisdom. When you hear a man speaking, a preacher, a teacher that is and um, that is teaching false things don't give your ears to him because he will confuse you in the in time of need you'll be hearing another voice the devil will use his own approach in your case and confuse you see devil was using scriptures wrongly on jesus jump down from this mountain for it is written he shall give his angels charge of you and they shall bear thee with their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Was that properly interpreted? False preachers. Cutting scriptures anyhow. And teaching you to damn your soul. To bring darkness on your way. Turn away from them. Turn away from them. Apply yourself to the truth. Apply yourself to the truth. For the word of God in your mouth is truth. That is what the widow of Zarephath told Elijah. The word, I mean the widow whose son was dead. The widow woman told Elijah. He said, now by this I know that you are a man of God. And that the word of God in your mouth is truth. Yes. Go for the truth. And don't allow anybody to confuse you. To damn your soul. To a law. Now, number two. Praying for the will of God. Praying for the will of God. Here, I'm talking about our prayer for you. To know the will of God in all matters. In every area. Because the success of the Christian life lies in it. Freedom from sin is in it. Holiness of life is in it. If you go into a business that is not the will of God for you. You have endangered yourself spiritually. If you go into partnership that is not the will of God for you. You have endangered your soul for it. So, it is our prayer that we know the will. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. Ephesians, chapter 1. I read verse 15. The Bible says, Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know it's my prayer for you that have given your life to christ that have come to this higher calling holiness a holy calling that God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, may cause you to know, grant you grace to know his will, to know his will and walk in his will, that your dark mind 
and she receive light so that you are not a fool be, be you not fools but understanding what the will of god is in all manners of life in the dealing at home in business in the church with one another that god will cause you to know his mind in the decisions of life that you will be taking for your decisions are very important they spell your progress or downfall that in the decisions of your life you will go according to the light and the revelation of the understanding inside you which god will give you it's my prayer you will know the mind of god you will possess the mind of god in philippians chapter 1 verse 9 to verse 11 and this i pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgments you will be able to reason on scriptures and possess the right knowledge that will guide you in decisions you will reason digest the scriptures and possess the actual knowledge and wisdom that will guide you in actions of life and in relationship among yourselves that you will know looking into the word of god will receive clear understanding through proper reasoning comparing scriptures with scriptures to know how to handle sinners and their persecutions against you to know how to speak a word for the tongue of the learned study it to answer you will know how to answer every situation what god will want you to do at every moment may it be showing your life in jesus name yes that ye may approve things that are excellent you will know the will of god and consent to things that are right you will consent to things that are true that are correct you will agree that nobody will shake you anyhow no you will agree with actions of truth with persons of truth who have the truth you will not have a mind back no light is in your mind you will naturally know the path god is in you will know the path god wants you to follow you will know where god wants you to belong looking at his word judging it very well you will understand what the mind of god is that is it that's maturity in christianity that's maturity you will know how to deal with every man all these people that come to you brother borrow and lend me money and uh, did it all these ones that come to say the lord says i should tell you all these prophecies that come to you uh, uh, this one is a revelation from god uh, the lord told me that through the scriptures and proper reasoning you will know when god speaks and when god didn't speak you will know may it be so in your life in jesus name that is how you will be guided and preserved in this christian way that's how you will be victorious over the deceit of the last day you'll be victorious over the deceit of man for man is coming man will pour dust on his feet and cook food and leave it for th three days and allow the food to have more cause and then carry it and come to you now and say see my feet i am coming from a far journey see the food we, we cook hot mocos now is in it that you will look at him and laugh because that god will 
grant you understanding of the scriptures memory of the scriptures God will quicken the scriptures to you and cause you to discover the secret of man to discover the tactics of man in Jesus name that's our prayer yes that's what God will want you to know that ye may approve things that are excellent that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ can you see holiness holiness comes with knowing the mind of God holiness comes with doing the will of God holiness comes with doing the right thing at the right time as the Lord guides you so come to know his mind Come to know his will so that you will attend to holiness and that this will be continuous in your life until Jesus appears in the rapture. Be filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. That knowing the mind of God, having proper judgment, you will produce righteous fruits. You will take righteous decisions. Yes, that even your counseling to others will be right counsels. That you will bear fruits and bring forth fruits of this of the ministry. If the one the type God wants, because you know His mind, you know the time. You know what to do. You know the season. May God mature your life. In the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 9. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we had it, did not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. All wisdom and spiritual understanding. Can you lay hand upon your heart? I want to pray a prayer for you. A prayer that will make you useful to God. A prayer that will make you holy and clean. A prayer that will make you laugh over Satan. For you will win over him perfectly. And that prayer is that you might be filled with the knowledge of the will of God. In all wisdom Amen. and spiritual understanding, Amen. it is my prayer for you that you will not judge things in their physical appearance. Amen. You will take, you will understand the spiritual meaning of those things. Amen. You will take things in their spiritual significance. Amen. You will take decision based on the revelation of God in the spiritual sense of it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. When Nicodemus came to Jesus and said, You are a teacher come from God. Jesus knew what he needed was, I want to be born again. And that's why he, he gave it to him. He left him from he let him away from there straight to the point. The Lord grant you this grace. Yeah. When people came to him and came with a coin because they came to test him. They came to test him. Do we pay C, uh, uh, tribute to Caesar? He knew what was in them. He knew. 
may God grant you that knowledge in the name of Jesus so that nobody will trap you no people telling you lies the Lord will give you the second heart the inner ear the spiritual ear to pick this thing that I'm ready with this ear I'm ready listening with this my heart but there's another one spiritual one that is analyzing what you're saying in Jesus name Amen. that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing if you have this knowledge you will walk worthy of the Lord you will be a coordinator in this you will be a leader in this you will be a Christian in this that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. And the Lord answer these prayers over all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, when the Lord came to Solomon and said, Ask what I shall give you. I'm telling you, after you know the Lord, the next thing is know his mind, know his will. What to do, what not to do. Solomon said, Give me wisdom. I want to know what to do. I want to know how to do. Because I am a small person. Leading this great crowd. I need to know your will. I need to know how I can do a thing. When you want me to do it. Where you want me to do it. With whom I should walk. I need that. And that is what prospers Solomon in his kingdom. Wisdom. Yes, now I'm taking the last point now. Seeking God for his specific will. This now comes down to a particular matter. It may not have to do with doctrines of scripture. It is a particular decision you want to take and you want to know the mind of God that is it as for the general mind of God I say through the knowledge of scripture you will know how this is to be done how that is to be done but what about in a specific thing let me tell you Daniel and his group wanted God to tell them something specific and they went before him in prayers he gave it unto them they, they went before him look at it in Daniel chapter 2 verse 16 Daniel chapter 2 verse 16 the Bible tells us here, saying, Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Now, it's only God himself now that knew the dream that knew the interpretation but he will give it to the to Daniel there are areas in your life that only God knows the right action you should take but he will give it unto you that's what you, he wants you to have confidence in this on marriage only God knows in fact, a man has come. A man has come 
who is this man? Is he a child of God or one of these people? Or even an occultic man sent to destroy my faith? Or is a woman, is my mother that is sent now to come and clear out all that is in my life? I don't really know. The, the, the days are wicked now. Only go! Knows what is in that man. Only God. Knows what is in that woman. But he will show you. A man has come and is asking you to go with him somewhere. According to you are to go for a business, but is he telling the truth? Is he telling you the truth? Or is leading you to go and do damage with you? To go and clear you out? Should you go for that journey with him? Only God knows the truth about it. Whether there is safety in the matter or no, only God knows, but he's ready to tell you. That is how it is. Somebody has told you, if you can buy these goods, that this, 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 this will be the result of it. This is what the gain, this is how the gain will come up. Is he telling the truth? So, seeking God for a specific, his specific will in your matter. Look at it. So, verse 17. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. That they would desire mercies of the God of heaven. Concerning this secret. That Daniel and his fo fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Of Babylon. Then was the, can you see, read verse 19 together. One, two, go. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Stop there. The God of heaven. Raise up your hand and bless the God of heaven. You are serving the God of Daniel. You are serving the God of Daniel. His will will be revealed. In that matter, he will show you. In that issue, he will answer you. Concerning your guidance, he will guide you. I will instruct thee and guide thee in the way that thou should go. I will guide thee with my eyes. The Lord shall set a camera on you. This road construction instrument that shows how straight the thing should go, the Lord will set it over your life. Your you feet shall be straight until you achieve it. In Jesus' name. But the problem is don't seek him. You just stand up and go and take action. You don't ask him for the how you should speak, the way you should speak at this time, the action you should take at this time. You don't ask. Ye ask not. Ye have not because ye ask not. Yes, that's why you're in darkness. They're always blaming you, always failing. Always failing. You are not asking. The mind of God. You are not. One of the revelations my wife gave is that the Lord told him, told her. Where I am happy with my son, comparing me with another minister, he said, your husband always asks me for everything. Tell him to continue with this. That other minister, is he feels he has known me enough, enough now, so he assumes action. That's what he feels. Have you understood the Almighty to perfection? 
O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. When I was coming to you people here, I was wondering what type of message I'll preach here. How do I, what do I tell the people here? God is there, he will tell me. I'm teaching you what he gave me for you. Why? I ask him. Are you happy? Do likewise. You will find success in your way. In Jesus' name. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. And he changed the times and the seasons. He removed kings and set it up kings. He gave wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to him. To them that have understanding, he revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hath who has given me wisdom and mind, and has made known unto me now what we desire to be. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. O oh Lord, always answer your children as they come, Amen. that we may know the secret of life, Amen. the path of life, Amen. in the name of Jesus. That is it. The Lord is waiting for you. Concerning that decision, he is waiting for when you will come. He is waiting for you. Give us a time. I don't know how much time Daniel took, but the Lord answered. The Lord is waiting. A group of people can also ask the will of God over the group. An institution can also Ask the will of God over the institution. A church can also pray to know the will of God over the church, over a decision. A family can come up to ask for the will of God over a decision, over an issue. The Lord will answer all of them. Because the Bible said it is not the will of God that any should perish. If he does not show it to you, you will perish. Because it is not in a man that live to order his steps, to direct his steps. The steps of a righteous man are directed by the Lord. He will never leave you like that. That's why acts it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. He that asks receives. He that seeks finds. He made himself available and now is waiting for you. God is waiting for you. You will know what to do. Amen. Yes. Look at another case. Isaiah and Jeremiah chapter 42. Verse 1 to 9. Jeremiah 42. Verse 1 to verse 9. Then all the captains of the forces and Johanan, the son of Karia, and Jezaniah, the son of Hashiah, and all the people from the least even unto the greatest came here. A group of people, a church, an organized body, and said unto Jeremiah the prophet, Let we pray thee, our supplication be accepted before thee. And pray for us unto the Lord thy God 
even for all this remnant, for we are left but a few of many, as thine eyes do behold us, that the Lord thy God may show us the way wherein we may walk and the thing that we may do. Can you see now? This group of people in Jerusalem, the remnant of the people of God, gathered themselves together because of the attacks against them. They wanted to know the mind of God. What God would want them to do, there is a thought, do we leave Jerusalem because the enemy is coming again to finish the rest of us? Should we leave and go for safety into a stronger nation where the enemies cannot reach Egypt? Do we go there? Or is it sure the enemy will not come back again for the rest of us? That we can remain in Jerusalem. This we don't know. What's the mind of God about it? What's the mind of God about it? Yes. We want to know it. Because it will be well with us. And they went to Jeremiah the prophet. Come, please handle this matter for us. We want to know what do we do in our situation? What do we do? What should this body do? What should this organization do? What should this group do? What should this church do? Take it to God in prayer for us. Then the Bible says in verse 4. Then Jeremiah the prophet. Said unto them. I have had you. Behold. I will pray unto the Lord your God. According to your words. And it shall come to pass. That whatsoever thing. The Lord shall answer shall answer you I will declare it unto you I will keep nothing back from you do you like it so are you make, looking for the will of God do you want God to take actions on you do you want God to guide you and show you how you should live Jeremiah says I have had you I will take this matter to God I'll go and tell God about you. Amen? Amen? I'll go and tell God about you. And I will say, God, there is a group of people that want to know your mind over them. They want to know how a thing should go with them. And I will be faithful in telling you what the Lord says I should tell you. Amen. Amen. Verse 5. Then they said to Jeremiah, The Lord be a true and faithful witness between us. If we do not even according to all things for the which the Lord thy God shall send thee to us. Now, Jeremiah affirmed that I will not change whether the matter favors you or does not favor you I will give it to you like that because your future is not in my hand the God who possesses your future whatever he says I will put it to you like that and then the people say okay we too are trying to affirm it now that whatever you tell us whether it favors or disfavor, we will take it that this is what the God of heaven has said. <laughs> Praise the Lord. As for Jeremiah, he was a true man. But if these people would be like the way they have said here, it would be wonderful. If I not, their future will be well. 
For light shall shine in their way. The presence of God shall be among them. But were they like that? Or they just spoke with mouth? Let's move. Verse 6. You see what they say. Whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God, to whom we send you, that it may be well with us. When we obey the voice of the Lord our God, ah, these people knew that the will of God is just the reason for your wellness. If you want wellness, if you want peace, spiritual healthy health, health rather you need to, do, to live your life according to the will of God digression there was a this folk tale story <coughs> that uh, a particular man came to marry a lady this man borrowed beauty from various animals to come in for the lady looking very handsome wonderful and the lady went to the mother and said hey this man has come for me the mother said okay take a lump of clay make it round and go and keep it tomorrow morning go and watch if you see it cracks into two that man is not the will of God for you uh, that man is not the right man because <laughs> God is not involved in this folk tale. But if you go in the morning and see that the thing has uh, is round, nothing has happened. It's just as you kept yesterday, so it is today. That's the man. So the woman, the lady, did exactly took a lump of clay round and preserved it. Her mind was there. Her mind was there. Early in the morning she woke. She woke up and went to see the clay. It was divided into two. Eh? She molded it back again. No, no, no crack was inside. <laughs> molded it back. No crack is inside. This man I was marrying him. No crack is inside. And brought it back to the mother. Oh, how was the clay this morning? Mother, it was just the same as I lay yesterday. Oh, dude, that man is the right man. That's how the marriage took place. As they were going, the man was giving back the various parts he collected from various uh, animals. And that handsome man changed shape. Eh? I won't go there now. This, this is the man that came to your house. Is that not what you do? You ask God, show me your will. He shot you, said no. You go to court other scriptures that have no connection to still justify yourself just for your doom. Just for your doom. God revealed to you say no. No, 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 this is not correct. Because you have a set mind already. Son of man. Your people come to you with idols in their faces and they come to inquire of me thus says the Lord whosoever comes to you with idol in his face I the Lord will answer him according to the multitude of his idols that is what the Lord is saying because you have already made up your mind you have concluded. Then why are you seeking God's will? Where's God's will for what? You made up your mind already. So, verse, verse um, 7. And it came to pass after 10 days that the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah. Let's read verse 7. One, two, go. Ask, keep asking, you will receive. Although the day of the 
receiving we don't know you will surely receive maybe within 10 days maybe before 10 days maybe after 10 days seek continue to seek you will find the, the, the period of finding we don't know but maybe within, within 10 days or after 10 days but the law is seek and you shall find that's the word don't be too hasty God is the one to measure time, not you. It is not for you to know the times and seasons which the Father has placed in his own hand. But just keep on asking and wait for him. Wait for me. You shall not be ashamed. There shall not be ashamed that will wait for me. Don't be too hasty. But one thing is clear. It shall be done. God will answer you. What spirit do you put on? You asking the Lord in Psalm 25 verse 9. Psalm 25 verse 9. The Bible says the meek Will he guide in judgment? And the meek will he teach his way. Meek, total yieldedness, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Hum humility, the submissive man, I will guide him in the way. The one submissive, willing for my will. The one that says, not mine, but thy will be done. I will guide him in the way. I will direct him as he's thinking on my scriptures to arrive at the truth of the scriptures. The meek, the meek, I will guide in the way. Be gentle. Be humble. The Lord will guide you. Don't carry an idol in your heart. Don't have a set mind. Don't look at a particular person if it's not this one, nobody else. Then what do you want God for? You want, you want God to partake with him in sin? So that when the result comes, you say, God, me and you, we did it together. Is that what you are looking for? God, I, I and you, we did this thing together now. Is that what you want? You want to implicate God? <laughs> you want to implicate God? That you have made up your mind for your, for your life. And you want God to come and stamp it. Don't do that. Be gentle. Resign to him. And let him take his will. Whether it favors you or disfavor you. Actually say it, that, say it this way. Whether it favors your flesh or disfavor your flesh. Exactly. Because all the decisions of the Lord are for your good. They may appear hot in your flesh now. But they are for your good. All things work together for good to them that love God. It's only your ego may be affected. Your pride may be affected. Your hasty hastiness. Your carnal desires may be affected. Otherwise the decisions of God. All the ways of God are mercy and truth. All the ways of God. All his decisions are for your future good. Resign unto the Lord. You will see him take over. Say, Lord, take over my life. I am tired of living myself. I'm gaining nothing. I'm frustrated. I've wasted my resources. I've wasted my energy. 
trying to lead myself. Lord, forgive me. Make a change in my life. I want to see good before I die. I want to walk great works for you before the rapture. Rise up and pray to God that way. Jesus. You will see a difference. People will become surprised of you. You will come out of complex situations. Your wisdom shall be the wisdom of Joseph Daniel. Wisdom of righteous men. Oh, Jesus. Resign, resign, resign. And let God take over.
Sansa 2. God will instruct me and teach me in the way and to follow. He will guide me with his eyes if I will obey him. Amen. Amen. You sing after me. I will instruct you and teach you. to follow in to follow I will guide you with my eye I will guide you with my eye if you will obey me I will instruct you and teach you. I will instruct you and teach you. In the way you are to follow. In the way you are to follow. I will guide you with my Instruct you and teach you in the way you are to follow. I will guide you with my eyes if you will obey me. For the will of God, sing this song. God will instruct. Encourage yourself with the word. It's a word of faith. It's the word of God. Is that clear? It assures you. Go to him, he will do it. Now I'm standing from the beginning. One, two, go. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you are to follow. I will guide you with my eyes if you will obey me. Number two now, God will instruct me and teach me in the way I'm to follow. He will guide me with his eyes. If I will obey him, number two now, God will instruct me and teach me in the way I'm to follow. He will. Guide
guide me with his eye if I will obey. Give a thanks offering to him. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Now worship him and thank him that today has been a new day in your life. God is going to change things in your life. As you come to him, he says he will answer. light and not children of darkness. We need to be led by the God of light to the path of truth, the path of success. I'm praying for your people. I am praying for your church. Lord God most high, guide us to success in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for the families here. Guide them to success. In the name of Jesus. I'm praying for individuals. Those not married. Guide them to success. In the marital dealings. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord. Those who are in trouble. Trapped. By the devil. There's a way out and they don't know. Show them the way. In the name of Jesus. Guide them to escape. In the name of Jesus. We worship. Let us be better. All those of Merrick Marolin. They have been turning around without progress. Now you will show them the way. Hagar was moving in the forest. The child was crying and dying of thirst. She had no water. Neither did she know how you guide data to where there was a well of water. I am praying the miracle of guidance to success to the well of water will come upon these people in the name of Jesus. They will find water to drink. Those dying shall die no more. Lord, we worship. Every relevant information give them. Any person that is useful in their lives to bring their success, lead them to such an one. In the name of Jesus. Send messengers of good to their lives. I wish you the best children of God. The Lord most high lead you to success. In Jesus name we pray. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, 
production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior.
Yes, I believe. I believe. I believe you, Lord, 'cause you are my Lord and Savior. Savior, Lord. I believe. I believe in you, Lord. You are my Lord and Savior. You can. Say. 